This video is about economic efficiency. In economics, there are various different meanings of the word efficiency, so do not write about efficiency as if it was a general thing. Look at specific types of efficiency and explain them. It will almost invariably be an evaluative question, so look for evidence both ways. You can use either diagrams to explain the evidence or something in the data response. Now we're going to be splitting this video into three different types of efficiency. First of all, there are static efficiencies. Now, a static efficiency is where when a market changes its structure, say uh, going from monopoly to being opened up into competition, we assume that its cost curves do not change. So they are completely static. Now, the arguments there tend to favour small firms that are competitive and forced to sort of look to their costs and look to their customers to try to remain efficient that way. Now to counter that, we have dynamic efficiencies where we don't assume that. Large firms tend to make supernormal profits. They can use those supernormal profits to become more efficient in the way they produce stuff and more efficient in the way they chase up customers. So dynamic efficiencies tend to favor larger firms useful for your counterbalance. And useful for counter counterbalance is X inefficiencies. I'll also spend a sentence or two looking at Y inefficiency. And that's where large firms that aren't subject to competition become a little bit on the complacent side. So they either allow their cost to rise, because there's no reason why they shouldn't, or alternatively, they don't chase up customers the way that small firms feel as if they need to. So let's start with one of the statics, and that's productive efficiency. As the name implies, it's to do with production, so revenues don't come into it. And purely and simply, it's the point at which, on average, they produce units cheapest. So it's at the bottom of the AC curve, or where MC equals AC. Now, if we look at how this comes into action in an imperfect market in the short run, which is monopolistic competition or oligopoly or monopoly, or in fact, a monopoly in the long run, because there's no difference. Uh, you can see my conclusion is that they are probably not going to be efficient because they're imperfect. They ain't perfect. Um, and you can see from the diagram why this is likely to be the case. So to be efficient, they need to be producing at the lowest part of the AC curve at QP. But if they're profit maximizers, they're going to be producing at Q star because Q star isn't in the same position as QP. They are not efficient. They are not using their resources in an efficient way. Now, the reason why I've said probably is that if you're unlucky, you'll draw a diagram where profit maximization just so happens to occur at the same point as productive efficiency. So when you're drawing your diagram, try to make sure that you keep your lines really separate. Don't have three curves crossing at the same point because you are trying to show that an imperfect market isn't perfect. Now, if we look at one example of an imperfect market in the long run, which is monopolistic competition, remember that's the one where they've made a profit. So rivals have joined that industry. They've competed those profits away. It's a bit of a tricky one to draw because you've got to show the MC curve cutting the MR curve directly below where the average cost curves cross. So you get that sort of tangential effect. Well, again, QP is where we want to be if we're going to be productively efficient. We're at Q star, so we are not productively efficient. And you'll notice on this particular occasion, we actually have spare capacity. We are producing below the productively efficient point. If you want some decent examples of that, if you look at monopolistically competitive market, like say the high street coffee market, you know, cafes, cafes are typically empty. They have spare capacity. And so this diagram might help to explain that. So what about perfect competition with that flat AR equals MR equals D curve? Well, again, in the short run, they are not productively efficient. To be productively efficient, they'd need to be producing at the bottom of the AC curve at QP, but they're producing at the profit max point where MC equals MR. So they are not normally productively efficient in the short run. So how on earth can we call this market perfect if it's inefficient? Well, if you look at what happens in the long run, firms move in 
uh, to the market where, where other firms are making profits, that increases supply, that reduces price until those supernormal profits are competed away. So we actually finish up on the bottom of the AC curve. So in the long run, perfectly competitive markets exhibit productive efficiency. So what about allocative efficiency? Again, it's another static efficiency. There's a couple of quite long definitions of allocative efficiency down the bottom there. It's where uh, welfare, which is defined as consumer surplus plus producer surplus is maximized. It could be defined as where the benefit of the marginal unit gives to the consumer. That's the AR curve, the demand curve. The demand curve is a benefit curve where the benefit that the consumer receives is exactly matched by the resources that the producer has put into producing it. That's the MC curve. The easy way of getting it down to get a mark is by simply saying additive efficiency is where MC equals AR. So if we look at imperfect competition, that's any market that is not perfect, that's oligopoly, monopolistic competition or monopoly, they will be producing to maximize their profits where MC equals MR. So they'll be producing at Q star. However, to be allocatively efficient, they would need to be producing at QA. They are not producing at QA, therefore they are not allocatively efficient. Are you starting to get the idea that imperfect competition is not efficient? Well, you should be. What about a perfectly competitive market then? Now you remember in the short run, the perfectly competitive market was not productively efficient, but it is allocatively efficient because you can see that the allocatively efficient point where MC equals AR is exactly the same point for profit max, which is where MC equals MR. So perfect comp is allocatively efficient in the short run. What about the long run then? Yep, it is allocatively efficient in the long run because uh, again, we're looking at where MC equals AR, for allocative efficiency and we're looking at where MC equals MR for uh, profit max. So they are allocatively and productively efficient in the long run, which is why it's known as perfect competition. It's perfect. We're now into easy diagram territory when we're looking at dynamic efficiencies. Uh, so the idea of dynamic efficiencies were developed by Joseph Schumpeter. If you think about it, if these static efficiencies are so wonderful and competition is so wonderful, why on earth do we tend to do our shopping from large supermarkets like Tesco or Asda rather than going to the little corner shops? Because large firms tend to be dynamically efficient, as Joseph Schumpeter said, uh, they make super normal profits. They can invest that in capital or technology. They can develop IT systems to chase up customers. Uh, they can develop web uh, systems to chase up customers, that sort of thing. They tend to have the ability to innovate. Again, a really simple example. You might remember a few years ago, uh, Tesco devised little sort of cars for the kids to sit in when they were going around the shops, which would shut the kids up. So it's a little example there of where uh, large firms can be innovative. I can't imagine your small corner shop doing that. They might be able to use those profits to create incentives for managers or workers to work harder. Large firms tend to have access to finance. It tends to be a financial economy of scale so they can borrow money to improve stuff, to um, look at how to improve customer service or how to reduce costs. Overall, the diagram is dead easy. We simply show the average cost curve dropping to show dynamic efficiencies. So finally, we need to go back the other way. Really good for a question because you can evaluate a static efficiency by looking at a dynamic efficiency, and then you can evaluate on your evaluation by going back to looking at X or Y in efficiency. Now, large firms tend to be subject to less competition as a result of which they might become bloated and complacent. So they might be not that concerned to controlling their costs. So they might allow their costs to rise. That is X in efficiency. X, Y, X, well, it's a bit like the X factor. You're not quite sure what the X factor is. It's just something that makes somebody different. X in efficiency, again, you're not quite sure why costs are higher, but they are. And so we show that by showing an increase in the AC curve. It's the opposite of the dynamic efficiency diagram. Um, why in efficiency, it's not on the spec, but again, it's where large firms 
basically can feel they can ignore small customers. If you watch a program like Watchdog, a lot of the time they're talking about small consumer complaints about how large firms have let them down. So that would be why inefficiency. Don't need to know it for the spec, but again, it's one of those useful things you can always throw into an answer to enhance it. And that's all you need to know about efficiency and inefficiency.